Hey guys, Churchy here. In this guide, I want to show you an effective way to get started in Outward. I think it's a fun way to dive into the game as a beginner and a good way to get yourself familiar with some of the basics. So let's get straight into it. Step one, loot the beach. So you've just started and woken up on the beach. Loot the starting beach area, harvest all the garberries and grab all the loot. Make sure you wander up the stream. There's some loot on both sides of a wooden blockage. Also loot the junk pile on the beach and the hollow tree trunk near the hyenas. To access the trunk, you'll have to fight or avoid the hyenas. If you want to fight them, grab the machete from the body on the rocks nearby and try to lure one hyena at a time. Or, if you're feeling confident, fight them both. To control the fight, hit tab to lock onto a target and then move in circles around a hyena. As you move closer, the hyena will either jump backwards or lunge at you. As long as you keep moving in circles around it and keep a good distance, the lunge will miss you and now there's an opening for you to get a hit in. This fight is also a good chance to practice a few dodge rolls and blocks. Step 2. Loot Ciezo. Starting at your lighthouse, sweep through Ciezo, grabbing all of the loot you can find and harvesting all of the garberry and crab eye bushes. Make sure you grab the primitive satchel and other loot in the lighthouse. Thank you. 
Make sure you grab the water skin that's resting on the water purifier. Also make sure you grab the fishing harpoon on the docks and harvest the three fishing spots on the beach. Make sure you loot the upstairs chest in the town hall. It usually has a valuable item in it. Also loot the first part of the storage area. Make sure you grab the mining pick. If you feel confident, you can try fighting the troglodytes in the cave area. If you come across this exit, don't jump down or you'll be stuck outside of town and you'll have to make your way back through the wilderness. Sell all the bits and pieces you've gathered to the merchants in town. Step 3. Brew potions, cook food. You should have enough silver hey to buy an alchemy kit and a few ingredients. Buy an alchemy kit from the alchemist and any thick oil she has. Also buy any thick oil the Soroborian Caravana and the shopkeeper have. Greetings, friend. Is there something you need? Harvest three wood from a tree. Make a campfire and set up the alchemy kit on it. Combine thick oil and water at an alchemy kit to create three warm potions. Make as many warm potions as you can and then sell them to the merchants in town. If you end up carrying too much, just drop some potions, go and sell some, and then retrieve the potions. All right. Next. Head back over to the alchemist. Hey there. Now buy equal numbers of gravel beetles and blood mushrooms and equal numbers of star mushrooms and turnips. Ideally, buy as many matched pairs as you can. The Soroborian Caravana also sometimes sells gravel beetles. Combine a blood mushroom, gravel beetle and water to make three life potions. Combine a star mushroom, turmip and water to make three astral potions. Keep the life potions and if your character isn't going to be using mana, sell the astral potions. What can I- All right. If you need more water, gather it from the ocean. You can boil salt water at a cooking pot or campfire to get clean water and salt. Oh. 
I've left a link in the description to a video that goes into a bit more detail and will show you a way to use these recipes to make as much silver as you want without leaving Skiazo. Now's also a good time to do some cooking. You can use the cooking station in your lighthouse or set up a cooking pot near your alchemy kit. You can buy a cooking pot from the shopkeeper or the town chef. Is there something you need? And you can set it up by placing it on a campfire. Here's a few simple recipes to start off with. For life regen, make jerky by combining two meat with two salt. Meat stew by combining one meat with one vegetable and one salt. Raw meat and garberries are a good choice of ingredients for these recipes. For stamina regen, make garberry tartine by combining one garberry jam with one bread. Make garberry jam by combining four garberries at a cooking pot. You can also buy garberry jam and bread from the town chef. Can I help you? For mana regen, make termit pottage by combining three termips with one salt. A few teas that you should learn how to make are mineral tea, bit of spicy tea and soothing tea. Mineral tea restores 15 burn health, removes indigestion and gives the impact resistance up buff. You can craft mineral tea by combining a gravel beetle and water at a cooking pot. Bitter spicy tea restores 15 burnt stamina, cures infection and gives a cold weather defense buff. You can craft bitter spicy tea by combining an ochre spice beetle with water at a cooking pot. Soothing tea restores 15 burnt mana, and more importantly when starting out, it cures common colds. You can craft soothing tea by combining seaweed with water at a cooking pot. The toxic charge recipe is a good way to make a few extra silver. Grill crab eye seeds at a cooking pot. And then combine two grilled crab eye seeds with one salt at an alchemy kit to make three toxic charges. Toxic charges can also be used to arm pressure plate traps later in the game. Another useful thing to know is that most of the merchants in the game will sell you a gold ingot for 100 silver. One gold ingot weighs a tenth of what 100 silver weighs and you can always buy and sell them for 100 silver. This means that they're a great way to lower the weight of your currency, especially when you're traveling. Step four, leather and fang. Now that you've done a bit of crafting, it's time to sort out a weapon and some basic armor to get you ready for adventuring. Stop by the blacksmith and buy whatever weapon type you want to use 
I usually go for a Halberd or Great Axe at this stage of the game, they both have decent attack patterns and reach. A one-handed weapon and shield is also a good starting combination. The Halberd has a nice amount of reach and is good at keeping enemies at bay while also dealing a decent amount of damage. The Great Axe deals a lot of damage and moves you forward with its attack combos. It's a very aggressive weapon. A one-handed weapon and shield is a good combination of attack and defense. In my opinion, the Great Axe is the best choice for farming the early game enemies, but use whatever weapon you want to. If you've got a spare 25 silver, head over to the shopkeeper and buy a Nomad backpack. Is there something you need? Make sure you've got a water skin, backpack, and a weapon equipped, and then talk to Burak by the town gate. He'll give you a free skill for the weapon type you have equipped and let you leave Cierzo. You aren't going to be traveling very far yet. All you want to do right now is hunt some hyenas to get predator bones and hide. When you leave Cierzo, head east, then southeast, and you'll find a large pack of hyenas that you can farm. Same idea as earlier in the guide, move in a circle around the hyenas, bait out a lunge and strike back when they're vulnerable. Or if you're using a great axe, you can be a bit more aggressive. You can also hit B to drop your backpack. This will let you move faster and perform dodge rolls without slowing down. To craft a set of makeshift leather armor, you'll need four hide and a basic hat, basic armor and basic boots. Any of the starting clothes or basic clothing items usually work for these slots. When you've gathered the hide, open the crafting menu and combine one hide and a basic hat to make the makeshift leather hat. Combine two hide and a basic armor to make the makeshift leather attire. Combine one hide and some basic boots to make the makeshift leather boots. The makeshift leather armor set gives you some basic physical defense and cold weather protection as well as a small bonus to your pouch size, which can be pretty handy when starting out. To craft a two-handed fang weapon, you'll need the weapon of your choice, two predator bones and one linen scrap. For one-handed weapons and the shield, you only need one predator bone. If you've killed the pack of hyenas and still don't have enough predator bones, you can find another hyena in the cave nearby and a few more in the surrounding areas. When you've gathered the predator bones, open the crafting menu and combine your weapon with the predator bones and one linen scrap. Remember, two predator bones for two-handed fang weapons and one predator bone for the one-handed fang weapons and shield. If you run out of linen cloth, don't worry, there are plenty of armors and clothings that you can break down in the crafting menu to get more. A quick note here, there are a lot of items that break down into different materials and a fairly common practice when out exploring is to break down all the low tier iron items that you find into iron scraps. Iron scrap is an ingredient in a lot of the basic crafting recipes, so it's a very handy thing to collect. Step five. 
what to bring on an adventure. Now that you know a few useful crafting recipes and have some decent starter weapons and armor, it's time to prepare yourself to head out into the world. Don't worry about it too much the first time you set out to explore, but while you're learning the game, you should aim to bring the following items when setting out on an adventure. Bring at least two of each tea, bring three to six life potions. I usually assign my life potions to five in the quick slot bar. Bring three to six bandages. Bandages are handy for a bit of extra life regen and stop bleeding. You can combine two linen cloths to make a bandage. Bring five jerky and three meat stew. These should cover your life regen needs. Bring six to 12 Garbury Tartine, the more the better. You use a lot of stamina when roaming around and combining the stamina regen from the Garbury Tartine with the stamina regen you get from drinking water will make running around much easier. If you run out of Tartine, you can harvest the Garbury and eat it and that will give you a small amount of stamina regen. Also bring along two to three water skins. For longer trips, I'll usually bring three. If your character will be using mana, bring three to six astral potions so you have a way to restore mana and three to six termit pottages to cover mana regen. Also consider bringing some extra soothing teas so you have spares to restore burnt mana. When starting out, you should also always make sure you bring along a tent or bedroll, a lantern, a backpack, a fishing harpoon, and a mining pick. You should also bring a flint and steel. It's also worth bringing along a bow, at least 15 arrows, and 3-6 to six trip wire traps with the same number of iron spikes. You can buy a bow and arrows from the blacksmith. You can also craft 3 arrows by combining 1 iron scrap and 1 wood. You can craft 2 trip wire traps by combining 2 iron scraps, 1 wood and 1 linen cloth. and you can craft three iron spikes by combining four iron scraps. Traps and spikes can also be bought from the blacksmith. Having a bow and traps will allow you to strike at a distance and also easily lure enemies into some pretty painful situations. Traps can also give you a decent fallback plan if a fight gets tough. Now that you've got your gear sorted, if you want to keep your lighthouse, you should farm up 150 silver to pay off your debt. Greetings. How go your efforts? You have a way to make that payment. And on time, too. I'm impressed. Or pop down to the beach via the Ciazo storage exit. and give Mitchell Aberdeen a bandage to earn a tribal favour, which you can then use to pay off your debt. If you lose your lighthouse, don't worry, you can buy it back for 300 silver. I'm afraid that you came too late. The light if you cannot succeed, indeed. Ha. Huh. Huh. Ha. Hmm. If you've got a spare 100 silver, also consider stopping by Ito the Spellblade in Ciezo and picking up the Fitness and Steady Arm passive skills. They're 50 silver each and both quite useful. Amber, my friend. Also, it's worth quickly mentioning here that 
you only have three breakthrough points to spend on breakthrough skills, and some of the specialization skills after the breakthroughs are mutually exclusive. So think carefully about what skills you want to get, what breakthrough skills you want to get, and the skill trees that you want to follow. Anyway, now you know some useful crafting recipes, have some basic gear, and have an idea of some useful things to bring with you on an adventure. You're ready to build on a solid foundation and get out into the world and explore. I hope this guide has been helpful and that you've learned a thing or two. Have a good day or night, whichever it may be, and I'll see you in the next video.